Oh, the panels above, the wall panels? Um, they might have used a chainsaw. Yes. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to episode four of Inspectors React. I'm Jeff Hopp, Technical Director for Sheffield, and I have been in the metal roofing industry for 15 years. I'm Dave Stubbs, the Assistant Technical Director, and I've been in the business since 1987. Do that math. All right, so these are all commercial projects that we're gonna be looking at today, so let's go ahead and jump into the first photo. Allegedly, they could be comical as well. Interesting, it looks like it's a bit of new and a bit of old. It looks like a, some sort of a historical project. The wall is pretty much the same color as the roof. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on there. Sure. At least for me. Right. You know. Yeah, but nothing but, I mean, sticks out. Got the transition flashing. Next. Same roof. Nothing too bold sticks out. Maybe a couple fasteners, sure. Some highlighted areas down below the counter flashing at the, at the parapet, but. Sealed up well. Well, they use plenty of sealant. Yeah, I don't know if it's sealed up well. Yeah, there's, there's no lack of sealant being used. Right. My turn? Go ahead. Oh, I can't wait. Transitional component from, uh, seems to be a steep pitch standing seam roof onto a, some sort of a membrane or single ply roof. No glaring issues from, you know, that, that current angle, but. Um, like that they used uh, the single ply. Yeah, in that trough area, yeah, sure. Definitely helps keep everything watertight. Z closure sealed up. They got butyl tape underneath the uh, the Z closures as well. Uh, the panels above the wall panels. Um, they might have used a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Hadn't got to that part yet. Was, <laughs> was trying to start off with the good things, but sure. um, yeah, those are pretty hacked up at the bottoms. Trying to start with the good things. Yeah, that's the parent inside of you. <laughs> and it looks like they got a it's like a standing seam panel on the wall, 90 degree seam, but yeah, it's pretty hacked up across the bottom. Well, hopefully they're not done. I mean, there's no counter flashing. It's caulked in. I mean, the, the wall's showing through. I don't know. Is that cut out across the bottom there? Sure, sure, sure looks like it. Or it could be a simulated cut. <laughs> um, Panel's all scratched to hell. Yeah, it's got a little bit of wear and tear on it. I, and you can see at the Z closure too. I mean, not a lot of compression. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's butyl tape underneath it, but you can see where the gaps in between. So they probably don't have enough fasteners in the Z closure. A lot going on there that still needs to be corrected. Yeah, so I say hopefully they're not done. Um, there might be an issue with the head wall as well. Might not have the proper pitch to it. It doesn't seem to be at the same plane as the roof. But hopefully it drains and, and that, but that is definitely suspect from from this angle. There's there's obviously some things that still need to be ad addressed in, in what they have installed so far. For the most part, corrective, but still potential for water filtration immediately. A little bit more forethought could have been put into that. Or if you want to go above and beyond, five thought. <laughs> We've got striations in the flashing trim itself. I think it's safe to say, say that they used a panel to create the flashing. I don't see a lot of striated counter flashing. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work for no gain, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It has the potential to leak. Striations on a flat surface like that, it really has the potential, just because of the surface tension of water, to, to hold or to sit up there and uh, negate the sealant. I mean, they were consistent how they cut the bottoms of the panels, though, on the walls. What, just plain bad? Yes. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, they, they stuck with it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it can't be finished, but... You have huge gaps. That's a panel end cap. I mean, I can kind of see what they were what they were trying to do there because they've got the panel seam coming up along that rake line. And it's a ninety degree seam. Yeah, I mean, they just had other options to um, fortify the install. Not your typical seam panel end caps just used in the in the areas of the roof where you don't have a curb or something along those lines. That's usually not your typical termination. And then obviously they got some flashing that needs to be done underneath that overhang. Yeah, things need to be closed out. Otherwise, fire mitts, pests, whatever, can get in there and build yeah. nests. And it's, hard to, it's hard to judge work without it being complete. You know, once it's completed, then you can see a lot, because you just don't know where people stop and you know what they have planned for different areas, but. I just hope they don't think it's complete. <laughs> and the panel end cap, that's again, that's not something you usually see typical nope. in, uh, in the field of your roof. 
Uh, it looks like we're doing a beat equidizer situation because it looks like they have backup plates at the top. Right. Backup plates, they're drying in as they go, which is a little bit alarming just because I think the uh, opposite side of, you know, of the plane of the roof that we have looks like it's completed. Hopefully there's shark skin or yeah, some sort of an underlayment on, on both sides. Panels are boxed. Z closures look good. Can't really tell how many fasteners they have in it. No, we hope that there's you know minimum of five and using a pre-manufactured curb, it looks like. They're using the butterfly clip and letting them modulate on their own. And Looks like you have enough water, a uh, room on the side for water to get off, and being so close to the ridge, you're not gonna have a ton of water coming down past right. that anyways, but right. it's always good practice. Oh, I wonder what the thought process was on this one. Hey, Charlie, let's we'll start in the middle. I'll work to the left and you work to the right. Right. <laughs> I mean, it looks like you got a W with a valley. Is that what's going on there, or is that a transition? Uh, looks like a dead valley to be pitched. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of weird that that panel's short there. You would have a lap in your panel going halfway up your roof. Yeah, unless there's some sort of drainage coming out of the other side. But, yeah, a little bit hard to tell. Um, looks like they're taking some sort of protective measures in the valley to install the panels. As you can see on that right-hand side in the valley, it looks like there's a sacrificial piece just to uh, resist some of the scratching that can happen when you're engaging the offset cleat in the panels. Looks like the plastic's still on. Yeah, which so. could be another problem all on its own. Yeah. Don't, don't leave plastic on to bake in the sun. You'll never get it off. This is what we generally call the boneyard, where your panels and material sit on a job site. When I go out to inspect, this is something that I always take a look at is, How's the material being stored? How's the materials being treated? Because it sort of influences the conversations that I have with the guys on site. You know, take care of the stuff that's that's making you money, whether it's your tools, material, whatever. I mean, you, you can very well have damaged panels before it ever gets to the roof. I mean, that's a lot of money laying yeah. on the ground right there. Well, you've already got time and money into it, Yeah. right? We've already ran the panel, we've already moved the material once to load it on the machine, ran the material. The material was taken off the machine, put into crates, obviously. So you've got an investment. It's a shame that things get handled sometimes the way they do. So hopefully there's not a lot of damage. It kind of it kind of gives you an idea of what you might be dealing with on the roof, seeing how things are taken care of on the ground. Or not taken care of. Or not right. taken care of, correct. Right. There's better ways to do that. Yes. Not sure if those fell there or if that's the, <laughs> if that's the way they they stock their their job site yeah. it's interesting it looks like it looks like the panels closest to us are on some type of wood and then the other ones are just laid stacked directly on the ground not the way I would stack the material not the way the material should be handled not the way that we suggest in you know our documentation as far as stocking the material but um, good example of what not to do yeah and, and look that might be a temporary thing where you know they're just going to get something but Temporary things, though, can still sure. do damage, you know. I mean, Absolutely. it looks like maybe the panels were stacked up and then they slid, they hit the ground. It looks like all kind of debris on the ground that, uh, you know, caused scratches and things like that. Coating on the panels is one mil. It's not very thick, so, you know, you get a deep scratch in it and now you could be having issues with your substrate. I tell guys, you know, it's always best to stock the material on the roof. You put the stuff on the roof, it's less likely to get driven over, for sure. Don't have to move it twice. Well, you're hoping not to. Uh, it's just a safer place to store your material, but um, we all know how construction works. Another boneyard of random panels stacked in random fashion. Were these taken off the roof? It's like it's hard to tell. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this that's just not the way to store material. They need to be stored in a fashion that allows for drainage. Let the water get off the panels. Water shouldn't be sitting on them. I mean, there's, there's an investment in these panels, not just for the project, but for the future. So. And they're all twisted up. I mean, nothing's laying flat or straight. Yeah, not sure why we have oil canning, right? Right. Hey, the, the castrations in the, it, that'll cure it. The industry dirty word. A couple things that either need to be enhanced or finished out. For instance, that the uh, offset cleat on the valley. Probably use some more fasteners, as long as it's gasketed properly with the, with the butyl. Yeah, it's got to get stripped in. It needs to be stripped in, and then it needs to be continued. Hopefully it gets continued down past where it is now. It either needs to come straight across to the panel seam, 
or it needs to continue along that diagonal you know, route to the panel seam. Uh, speaking of panel seam, that panel seam's come up and diving right underneath that valley. So I'd like, you know, I would definitely be checking that area out a lot closer. It's gonna be kind of hard to slide a seam up underneath those areas. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, that means more than likely something's cut. Yep, yep, so it'd be, you know, potential for, you know, water entrapment right there between that seam. Not knowing where this is located, because we don't know a lot about these pictures. But um, snow country, that's that's a horrible execution there. Um, that thing's gonna freeze and freeze up and it's gonna move stuff. It's either gonna move the fascia, move the panels, bust the seam open, bust the valley open. So just not a good scenario for any place in snow country and really any install anywhere. Don't, don't trap that water at that seam. All right, obviously a retro. Retro fit. Looks pretty consistent. It's hard to know a lot about whether what's correct or not without knowing the details as far as the subframing and things like that. You know, it looks like they're in the beginning stages of getting started. You can see the subframing. Um, offset cleat looks good. Love those, you know, that separate component of offset cleat and valley versus, you know, integrated valley. On long valleys, I don't think that has a place, but um, that looks consistent. Looks like there was a thought process. Screw, screw pattern looks close enough. And it looks, like I say, it looks consistent. It's like seeing things look the same at, at, you know, 40 feet away versus right in front of you. So those are the photos we have to review today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, keep a lookout for the next one. Thanks very much.